All right, so we're at a point where we're ready to start painting our self-portrait. Uh, I've gotten rid of all of the mapping lines, and now it's just pretty much down to what tools do I need. So you're going to need watercolor. You're going to need a bucket with water, and I've got three different size paintbrushes, small, medium, and large. And even though I feel like I'm probably done drawing, I still have my pencil and my eraser around just in case. When you go to start painting, the first thing you want to paint is the things that I consider the most boring. In this case, that would be the background and the shirt. So you have to choose a color for your background. I think for me, I'm going to choose green. Just happen to throw that out there. There's no real special reason. You're going to obviously need some water. Scrape it off because you do not need a lot of water to make this work. The idea is, can you demonstrate flat color? So I'm going to take a little bit of my green and I'm trying to create areas of flatness in the background. The background is not really an important part of the drawing. So this is a part where you can show slow, steady control. Okay. So the idea is I don't want this to be taking up a lot of your attention when you look at my painting. So it's just kind of there to fill in the space. I don't want it to look like I left it blank, but I also don't want it to dominate the painting. It's all about the person in this painting. So in order to make your paint darker, we know you use more paint and less water. So look what's happening with the color of my green. It's darker because I used more color, less water. So can you manipulate the darkness and lightness on purpose. That is how you control value. I can go back in for more green and it will make it even darker. So the idea is flat color around the entire background. Alright, so I've got the background colored in. So now I'm going to go in and start thinking about how I want to color in the shirt. And shirts are kind of tough because you kind of want it to make look like there's folds and wrinkles, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put down a flat area of color. I'm going to call it the base color. So for this shirt, I want to make my shirt orange. So I'm going to put down a flat base color of orange. So at this point, I've got a pretty flat area of color on my shirt and my tie. I'm kind of going for a triad at color family. You can notice I have green, orange, and purple. And now here's where you can start to do the details if we're trying to give that effect of value, lightness, darkness, and trying to make the area um, on the fabric look like it's got folds and wrinkles. So you can kind of see what I've done here. I've started to draw the indication of folds and wrinkles. So what you need to do now is think about how can I make this orange on my shirt darker? And the answer is to use more color. So I'm barely even using any water. I'm really going in for a lot of paint. So I'm trying to find areas of dark. So for me that would be like underneath the collar, up the side of the collar. And if you've made it too dark, it's really not that hard to fix it. I would take another brush with just water. This brush has just water on it and it's going to be like a blending brush. This is called wet on wet because the paint is wet that is on my paintbrush, obviously, and the water is still wet on the actual shirt. So I'm going to go back for my detail brush, not using hardly any water, and I'm going to go back in and find those little areas where I could make it look like little folds or creases on the shirt. So some of the areas I'm leaving alone because I want it to appear as though there's like little folds in the shirt. You can notice that that sound means probably my paintbrush is getting dry and probably the canvas paper is getting dry too. And now what I've got here is I've got the just a slight indication that part of the shirt rises up because it has uh, some folds or wrinkles in it and some of the shirt is flopped inward, right? 
I'm going to make part of his collar a little darker up here too, just to show the indication of where it meets the neck. And I'm just going to kind of blend it out. I'm letting the paint run out until it eventually just blends in with whatever's there. And I could do the same thing to the other side to get that same wrinkle effect. All right, so I've got both sides of the shirt done here. You notice I'm leaving some of it lighter orange on purpose, some of it's darker to give it that folded effect. So now onto the face, which can be the most intimidating part. In order to create skin color, um, a peachy skin color, it's gonna be a mixture of a few different things. It's gonna be a mixture of water, it's gonna be a mixture of orange, yellow, and red. But the first thing I like to do is go over the entire face with a coat of water because we're going to do a wet on wet effect. All right, so now you see a coat of water. For those of you who have darker skin, you're probably not gonna to need to do this. You could probably just use brown that's already in the palette for you. So for anyone who has lighter skin, this is where it's gonna be a mixture of yellows, oranges, and red. So I'm gonna come in here and just very lightly take a little bit of orange and just start to swash it around. And your skin's gonna appear orangey at first, and if it's too orange, then we go in and we take a little bit of yellow. So again, I'm going in for a little bit of yellow. And I come in here, and we're trying to mix it to the point where we've got yellows, oranges, and maybe depending on your skin tone, you might need a little bit of red. But the key is that at all times, the face is wet. So you've got to have water on the face and you just thin this out. And I'm spreading this out the whole time. It's a balancing act between orange, yellow, red, and water. All right, I want to do a quick uh, teaching moment here. If you start to get these puddles up here, you need to dry off your paintbrush or go get a paintbrush that has not been used. And what's going to happen is a dry brush on wet paper or on wet paint is going to actually suck up all of the extra paint. So if you start to get these puddles, dry off your paintbrush and go over it and it's going to actually take away the extra paint or the extra puddles that you actually don't want. Now I'm gonna think about hair color. So again, you're gonna to have to do some mixing and it's the same procedure. I'm gonna put a flat layer of hair color um, up on the top of my head. I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so I've got another base color uh, for hair. I'm gonna go in, do the same thing. Eyebrows and eyes, same kind of deal. Now if you have lighter hair, most of the time blonde hair is just this skin color with a little more yellow added to it. So the same procedure that you did to make skin color, but put a little more yellow in it, and it should give you a nice blonde. All right, let's talk about making lip color. Your lip color is just going to be your skin tone with a very, very small amount of red mixed in there. You don't wanna go overboard with the red, just a very, very tiny amount. And when it mixes in with the skin tone, It'll give you a nice lip tone. It's not too red. The last part of the video is how to use value to make it look like it's 3D. I'm gonna say light's coming from this side, which means all down the side here and on the other side of the nose, under the lips, is going to be darker. I've pre-mixed some of my dark tone and really what it comes down to is trusting that all this side would be a little bit darker because we're trying to make it look like our face has form. So I've used that darker tone. Look where it's gonna go. Side of the nose, under the nose, under the lips, under the chin. Lots of different places to make things look like they're 3D. Now the last step would be to use a Sharpie to outline places to make them kind of pop off the page. So your finishing touches, outlining everything, extra details, you got strands of hair, eyelashes, eyebrows, all those little things that kind of will complete it. And there is your finished self-portrait.